What is up guys? Today we're taking a look at three RTX 2060s. All three are from different companies and come in at different price points. The whole point of this video is to show you the performance of the RTX 2060, how it compares to other cards, and if it's a good purchase, if you you know are on a maybe nine series or even like something like a 1060, let's go ahead and take a look. The RTX 2060 is based on NVIDIA's TU106 chip, which is part of the Turing architecture. It features 1920 CUDA cores, 240 tensor cores, and 30 RT cores. You also have six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running across a 192-bit bus. As I said, we are checking out three different RTX 2060s, all of which are at different price points. To start things off, we have the Zotec RTX 2060 Twin Fan. This card is not overclocked, so it's at NVIDIA's reference GPU boost speed of 1680 megahertz. The card does look pretty nice though, and it has a nice wraparound backplate. This card sits at the base MSRP for 2060s, which is 349. The next card is the MSI RTX 2060 Ventus 6G OC. This card is overclocked with a GPU boost of 1710 megahertz. The card also has a dual fan cooling solution and a backplate. Although the backplate is plastic, it is not metal. The card carries with it a $10 premium over the 2060 MSRP, so it's $359. Our final card is the Gigabyte RTX 2060 Gaming OC Pro 6G, which does have a factory overclock, so the GPU boost is set at 830 megahertz. Unlike the other two cards, which were shorter, this card is like your typical graphics card size, and it does feature Gigabyte's WinForce 3X cooling solution, as well as a full backplate. This card comes in at 389. Before we jump into testing, here are the specifications of our test system.
All right, guys, so at the end of the day, I actually do like this card. I was, you know, it's the card that I was most excited about when, you know, leading up to the launch and everything like that, because this is gonna be the gamer's card. It does have that price point of 349, you know, for the base models. Um, and that's a good price, I think, for the performance that you're going to get. This is a card that can do 1080p at higher frame rates, or you're gonna do 1440p at over 60 FPS, uh, which of course is great for gaming. That's about the same performance as say a 1070 Ti. In our testing, it performed right up and you know traded blows with an overclocked 1070 Ti. So I think the performance is there when it comes to that. Of course, the RTX series in general has a bunch of caveats that we definitely have to discuss because that's what you're paying for, you know, with this card. So first is ray tracing, real-time ray tracing. For me, it's just not worth it, especially in a card like this, um, you know, because I think at 1080p, we were at over 100 frames a second without ray tracing in Battlefield 5, and then we turned it on and we went down to around 70 frames a second. Um, that much frame loss isn't worth it for me for something that's gonna look a little bit prettier, especially if I'm playing an online game where of course, the better the frame rates, you know, the more, you know, easier I can see things and, and everything like that. Um, you know, so that's the caveat there. And ray tracing just, you know, we've had multiple updates to Battlefield 5 to fix the performance issues and it's still not there. It's still not worth turning on for me. Um, so, you know, for this card, ray tracing just isn't there. Hopefully in newer games and when, you know, the next generation of games come out, ray tracing is fixed, uh, so it works, you know. So again, if you are into ray tracing, you're gonna get it with this card, but I just don't think in games it's there yet. Um, so that brings us to DLSS, which when we initially reviewed all of these cards, uh, all of our written reviews, we were really excited about DLSS because the only thing that we could really test it in was the Fan Final Fantasy V benchmark um, that had the DLS test in there, and it showed great performance. It showed, you know, you can turn DLSS on and you get more performance, which we were all about. Um, but it wasn't until it was added to Battlefield V to where we could really test it and see the difference. Um, so the first thing is that it doesn't look as good. Um, it just, it looks blurry. It, you know, you can like with the naked eye at any resolution from 1080p to 4K, with DLSS on, it just doesn't look as good. It, the picture doesn't look as sharp. It kind of looks blurry and washed out. And we showed you previously in the video, some of the screenshots um, with it on and off, and you can definitely tell the difference there. Um, so that's kind of, uh, yeah, it's just not there yet. Um, and another thing is that you have to have RTX, at least in Battlefield 5, you have to have RTX turned on to use DLSS. You have to enable it, cutting down your performance and then kind of boosting it up a little bit with DLSS. Um, again, I don't know why uh, it's, you know, supposedly people are saying that it's an RTX feature. Like in order to use DLSS, you have to have ray tracing turned on. Other people are saying that it is a bottleneck problem because there's not enough tensor cores. Um, so you basically turn on ray tracing to cut down the performance for DLSS. We don't know, but at least in Battlefield 5, DLSS does not look good. Um, I would prefer to have it off and get higher frame rates because of the fact that you have to have ray tracing turned on. Um, so those are the two kind of big caveats with any of the, you know, 20 series RTX cards is that DLSS and ray tracing just aren't there yet. Uh, they haven't been, it hasn't been implemented correctly in Battlefield 5, which is like the main game that, you know, NVIDIA is, you know, has advertised since the beginning of the RTX series. It's just not implemented great there and it just, it's not worth a performance hit and it's not worth seeing blurry images on your screen. But uh, as much as I talk about how it's not implemented yet, I still think this is a good card. Solid 1440p card and a great card for 1080p at high frame rates. Now we'll have links below to all three cards, all three written reviews of those cards. Um, but if you have any questions about the cards that we tested today, go ahead and leave a comment below. And of course, if you like this video, we would appreciate it if you hit that like button. So until next time, catch you guys later.